After sitting down with the DNC, CNN has announced that they want to change the format of the upcoming debate away from what was originally planned. Because this is going to be the first debate with just the two candidates going head to head, unless Tulsi Gabbard has anything to say about it. That's a real story. Um, so here's what to look forward to. The format for the next debate in Arizona, as it is proposed, would have the candidates seated for the first time this election cycle and take multiple questions from the audience. In the prior 10 debates, the candidates stood at lecterns and nearly all questions were asked by the professional moderators. So why do you think that the DNC would like to have both candidates sit down? Mm. I mean, it's the same reason that Biden will not do a long form interview with anyone, really. I know Rachel Maddow has been asking for like a week now to get an interview with the supposed front runner of the Democratic primary mm -hmm. and hasn't gotten one yet. That's Maddow. And has done an interview with Warren, who was out. But Bernie Sanders was like, right. yes, because he always does that. Um, Jeff Weaver, who has been part of our debate coverage in the past, uh, Bernie Sanders senior advisor said, why does Joe Biden not want to stand toe to toe with Senator Sanders on the debate stage March 15th and have an opportunity to defend his record and articulate his vision for the future? Um, and that's such a good attack, I think. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously we're saying that um, Joe Biden is clearly not good on his feet. Uh, for whatever reason, I think a lot of us uh, are saying, except you won't really see it in mainstream news, that Biden clearly is demonstrating a lot of signs of dementia. He is rapidly declining. You see interviews from just like three years ago, four years ago. He sounds really cogent. He, If I may be so bold as to say four years ago, he sounded like, Trump senile, you know, not senile, right. but but Trump level coherent. Mm -hmm. Because Trump understands the question and sort of has a beginning, middle, and end, even if it's the same word. Um, and I think Biden doesn't have an end ever to his sentences. Yeah. He has a beginning and a middle, and then then he sort of just peters out. Right. And and Joe Biden, ha he has a stutter. He's it's well documented his stutter that he's tried to fight his entire life, and that's that's an, a difficult thing to overcome. I just don't see a correlation between the kind of meltdowns uh, he's had during debates and the stutter that he seems to be trying to overcome. But then again, he did get off this amazing attack in a recent debate. Senator, I've served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. Oh wait, no, that was Lloyd Benson in one of the best attacks in a debate of all time. Biden said, anyway, my time is up, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> that's right, that's what he did. I mean, this is clearly like, it's a cop out and it's really sad because after having watched so many debates, right? Every single week it seems like there's a new and another debate and there's 12 people on the stage. Oh, there's eight, oh cool. Um, and Biden's sort of been able to skate through it all. Uh, and then finally there's a chance to have a real substantive debate between two people, have them go toe to toe, answer, you know, what's your answer to that? What's your response to that? You know, just really get into it. Now they're going to triangulate with audience members, right? And that is so much um, more beneficial of a scenario to Biden. And it it also is less confrontational. And I think we deserve to see something that is confrontational. I would say if it's from the audience asking questions, that's not actually his strength either. Because <laughs> every video that I've seen is of someone coming up to Biden and challenging him. Right. And being like, hey man, like recently we had a someone from the military saying like you're disqualified because your decisions leading up to the Iraq war have a legacy that still exists today and people are dead because of it, you're disqualified. And he freezes up, other times he's like vote for somebody else, vote for somebody else. Right, or just listen Jack. Listen, Jack, I mean, there will be a lot of Jacks in that audience. I'm very excited. <laughs> the DNC is gonna pack the whole audience by just filling it with people named Jack. <laughs> Jacqueline, Jacqueline, John, all right, that qualifies, get in here, John. We're gonna call you Jack, is that okay? Sit down. Uh -huh. James can be a Jack sometimes. <laughs> yeah, James, Jackie boy, that's so ridiculous. Um, do you wanna hear one of the most amazing uh, statements from uh, the Biden campaign that I've ever seen? Uh, oh, yes. Kate Bedingfield, in, in her Counter argument to Weaver essentially said, it's odd to see a campaign, talking about the Sanders campaign, that says it is based on revolution, arguing for the status quo because, quote, this is how every other debate has gone. Why is Senator Sanders opposed to a little change? Wow. <laughs> the spin 
trying to say that that uh, Sanders is opposed to change because he wants them to be standing the whole uh -huh. time. Someone who's been attacked because he's had he had a heart attack, and they're like this. But even the guy who had a heart attack is yeah. like, no, I'm good standing. Well, why is he so upset about his heart attack? I thought he wanted a change in the status quo. You know, like. <laughs> A while, oh, a little bit of rain never hurt anyone. Yeah. But Senator Sanders says he's got to cancel an event. I'm just making stuff right, up. Right, it's obviously. like, oh, you were, your heart was beating at a regular pace. Suddenly it starts beating faster and you have to go to the hospital. <laughs> um, but this is so ridiculous to say that the person who's advocating for a massive change in pretty much everything across the board versus a dude whose pride and joy is that he's a moderate opposed to overhaul. Yeah. And then they're trying to say that because Sanders wants to stand up the whole time. Right. And and Biden who has just given us tons and tons and tons of gaffes speaking at max one sixth of the time. Yeah. Is now gonna speak half the time. That's I, what they're up Absolutely, and I think that it's not just gaffes, right? Gaffes, I think he's always done, and, and there is a line between gaffes and just not being able to coherently make a point. Um, and I think Biden, you know, it, yeah, I have a lot of sympathy for someone who has struggled with a stutter, who publicly speaks all the time. Um, and he's done an amazing job throughout his entire career. I don't see that Biden here. So mm. let's just be fair to America in this instance and say that I'm not sure that he's up for this job. Um, and I, I guess I just liken it to like, you know, you're sitting at Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and everyone's talking over grandpa. Mm -hmm. He can't really get a word in. And then everyone leaves and they're going to the kitchen, and they go to the living room, and they go to play video games. Grandpa's left. And you're like, man, finally hear grandpa, you know, over yeah. this din. Uh -huh. What do you gotta say? And he's like, Listen, Jack, you're a lion face <laughs> dog pony soldier in the moon landing. Well, I don't know, my time's up. So like, ridiculous, but and, and we'll <laughs> see, we'll see what happens. Sitting down, they're gonna give him, the, the problem is they're gonna give him every opportunity to have the advantage and we'll see what he does with it. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.